Pokemon is no stranger to redesigns, and I don't mean Pokemon or characters that look slightly different from generation to generation as technology progresses, I mean full on changes to the way that a character is designed and presented. We see this mostly in the remakes, aside from one exception. As time has progressed, the design sensibilities of Game Freak have also progressed. And personally, my favorite redesigns came in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. While the first two sets of remakes, Fire Red and Leaf Green and Heart Gold and Soul Silver, were made as near necessities with the lack of backwards compatibility with the original Game Boy games, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were made because, well, the fans wanted them. And being a part of the generation that brought Pokemon into 3D, this was the chance for Game Freak to give the character designs a massive overhaul as well. When it comes to the protagonist, Brendan and May, there aren't immediately too many big differences. Obviously, the clothes and proportions are different, but they still maintain the basic adventurous protagonist look. I know that some people prefer May's original outfit, but the one that she wears in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is really more of a combination of the original and the redesign that she got for Emerald version. Having a sleeveless shirt, swapping the bandana for a bow, and losing the gloves fit the climate of the Hoenn region better though. It's a similar case with Brendan where he ditches the long sleeves, gets a pair of shorts, and has more of a tan. But this overall outfit is more reminiscent of the one from Emerald. Lastly, it's much clearer that his hat is a hat and not actually his hair. I do think that his pose is pretty basic though, because it was stronger in Emerald. Though yeah, might as well mention that the poses used in the key art for every character is also pretty important, because it's another way of presenting these characters as who they are, and show some improvements on Game Freak's part because of this, rather than just having them in a basic default pose. And we see this more clearly in Wally's redesign. Really, his proportions haven't changed as drastically as Brendan and May's. But that's a good thing because it keeps him looking young and inexperienced. He's given a bag to show that he's a Pokemon trainer on a journey as well. And the way that he's shown in his key art with his arms closer to his body show less confidence. Because he's just starting out. You can see the difference immediately when you compare his stance that he takes during your first battle with him in Mauville City, and the one that he takes during the battle at the end of Victory Road, and so that's been shown in the still image. Some minor changes have been made to the colors that he wears, but the pose and facial expressions are the most important. The gym leaders are by and large where we see this improvement the most. Roxanne's outfit has been changed a bit, specifically her skirt which was made wider for flair and given more brownish gray to resemble rock Pokemon. The original art just looks like a basic trainer, but here we see that she's confident in her knowledge, to the point where she's a bit of a cocky know-it-all. Her feet have been brought together to look more like a proper student, and of course the silhouette and line of action just have more energy and identity. Brawly undergoes a pretty big change. Of course he's posed more like a fighter, so his type specialty is more clear. Also his outfit is very different. His shirt looks more like what you'd wear to work out or to surf. He's got gloves and sunglasses to show he spends more time in the sun, and has more modern active footwear. Also I might as well mention it here, but did you know he was voiced by Sonic in the anime? I told you little dude, I'm not doing any battling today, don't you get it? Watson mostly maintains his peak character design, but he's given a tropical shirt that Pokemon should really sell in real life, and sandals to better show how much of a carefree jokester he is. Flannery's outfit has some added flair, like giving her a tied-on shirt instead of a crop top and more red and fire designs on her pants and belt. Again, the pose and facial expressions are the biggest improvements. From the original design, sure, you could tell she's a fire-type trainer, but now she acts more like we'd expect a fire-type trainer to act. Extremely overconfident, ready for battle, and probably a bit new to being a gym leader. A legitimate fiery personality. Now Norman more or less keeps the same outfit, just rolling up his sleeves and wearing sandals instead. You might think he's got a weaker pose to the old version, but I say this suits him better. The original just kind of looks like a generic battle me pose and his blank expression really doesn't match. Now he stands with his arms crossed, almost unimpressed. Or perhaps even a little impatient because he's waiting for you to excel and defeat him in battle. Honestly, a little intimidating as he's meant to be the player's father. He normally expects a lot of the trainers who come to face him, but even more out of you because he expects you to live up to his legacy. Winona honestly doesn't seem all that different. Yes, her outfit does get some updates, like wings and goggles, but I think both look pretty good. Even the original has a pretty good pose, showing she's quick moving and attentive in flight, while the new art shows her to be calmer, though still very aware of the battle or flight taking place. Liza and Tate get some basic outfit updates, but their new art shows them in the exact same pose, just mirrored. Better communicates the whole psychically linked twins motif. They also keep the same facial expression, showing that even though their minds are linked, their hearts are where they differ. Wallace is another character that I feel works in both instances. 
Both poses are flashier than their peers, but the outfits just embody the fashion at the time. One is very 2002 and the other is very 2014. But the redesign showing more skin also shows more confidence and the flowing scarf makes him look more like a water type trainer. It even resembles Milotic. Sydney is another big improvement. I can't tell what this guy is up to, but the newer conniving look really sells him as a dark type trainer. I'm not saying you need to wear black to use dark type Pokemon, but the simple change of making his main jacket colored black instead of just being the vest really does it. Phoebe's outfit is straight up the same aside from brighter colors being used later. The main difference is her more dynamic pose and even the dramatic lighting on her face, which implies something potentially sinister or ghost related. You know, like the literal ghost child who watches her battle? Here we can also see the change in face structure that happened over time, where the more modern designs have larger, more circular eyes. That part specifically I'm not exactly saying is better in later designs of Pokemon, but I'm just pointing that out. Glacia mostly stays the same, again some brighter colors, and she looks more cool and calm as opposed to stoic. Drake is literally the same, but the new key art seems to show him from a lower angle, which implies he's very tall. Also, the coat blowing in the wind even though the Hoenn League is indoors is just 10 out of 10. Steven keeps the same outfit with some added details, but having his hand outstretched shows him as more commanding, and his footing makes him seem more intelligent. And now it's time to talk about the characters that had the most changes and who drove me to discuss this topic, Maxi and Archie. I'll be honest, I really don't like their original designs. Other characters were communicated pretty well but were just vastly improved in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. With the original Maxi and Archie, I can't even really tell what they're supposed to be. Their outfits are just so generic. Archie, sure, I get the pirate motif, but why is he wearing all black and standing like that? Modern Maxi seems cold and calculating, his right hand adjusting his glasses, and his left hand fixed behind his back, resting as it's not needed. I know I keep talking about the fact that characters' feet are together rather than set at a wide stance, but hopefully in just the Hoenn designs alone you'll see that it's a very easy and clear way to show a character is smart, or at least that they spend their time thinking before acting, as opposed to characters with a wide stance who are already acting, sometimes before they think. This outfit is still a bit weird, but it is a huge improvement. There are a lot of parts to it, but they're all very neat, straight, and organized. We see this also in the Team Magma grunts and admins, where their poses are very rehearsed as they're meant to mirror each other and form an M for Magma. The grunts look pretty similar, just now their outfits are more in line with Maxi's uniform. Courtney and Tabitha are nearly different characters. Their original designs just look like upgraded grunts, but now we can see how they stand out. And with the way that Team Magma is structured, their new designs work a lot better. Tabitha looks like the snivelly henchman who sucks up to the boss, and Courtney, while she initially seems like a blank slate with a cute face, makes more sense when you play the game and see she's sort of detached from anything besides Team Magma to the point of obsession. And now Team Aqua is basically the opposite of all the organized and calculated look, because they're all literal pirates led by the Drip Master Archie. His base outfit resembles a wetsuit, showing he's a man of the sea. His collar is taller, which gives him more of the pirate captain look. So does the chain, which has been upgraded to a cartoonish level, but in the best way possible. His beard is pointy, giving him that dangerous look. He, as well as the Aqua admins and Grunt, have also been given a darker skin tone. I take this as being meant to show the differences between them who are more active, and Team Magma who, despite wanting to awaken Groudon, look like they haven't gotten any sun in weeks. The Grunts have more of a pirate look, going beyond just bandanas and actually wearing more tattered clothing. The blue of the bandana and black of the shirt have also been swapped. The admins have the biggest changes of all. While Matt was noticeably bulkier than other grunts in the original games, now there's no confusion. I think he's the biggest dude we've seen as far as named characters go. His shirt's straight up ripped off, and he uses a rope in place of a belt. It really makes him look like the muscle of the group, which as opposed to Tabitha, further drives home the differences between the two teams. Shelly practically looks like two different characters, and I really like both. The new design has some gorgeous key art that shows her as more flashy, and of course her design fits right in with the rest of Team Aqua. I honestly couldn't imagine the Aqua admins going through a portal and seeing how they look in a parallel universe. But those are the named characters of Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. It was pretty fun to look back on how these characters were improved or straight up reimagined. I think this is what made these games feel so fresh while also being very nostalgic. Just getting to see characters fully realized in a new generation. But for sure I will say that going from Generation 3 to Generation 6 was the biggest change for these designs. And even though the recent remakes took a different route, it's things like this that get me excited for the next ones. Though I'm perfectly fine waiting like 6 more years because that's likely when we'll get them. So no rush. And so that has been some of the best redesigns in Pokemon.
Thank you to all my channel members who make videos like this possible, especially Justin R, Mr. Pig Puncher, and Quago. If you want to support and have your name shouted out here, you can become a channel member as well, and get access to some cool emotes for comments and live streams that I'm very proud of. You can also follow me on Twitter for more memes. But anyway, this has been Gatorx, and I'll catch you later. You can get ready for an epic Pokemon adventure. Take to the skies with a new Soar feature. Take adventure to new heights with Pokemon Omega Ruby and Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. Rated E for everyone. Uh, that's a lot of luggage? No, this stuff? I brought presents.